In the words of Gilbert, Dr. Gilbert Fredell, if the problem is in the community, then the answer is in the community. And with that said, my colleagues and I turn to the community for their advice and recommendation for ways to address cervical cancer through screening and increasing the uptake of the HPV vaccine. As a result of asking the right questions and most importantly, practicing active listening. And with the help of our community partners, we developed a three-prong approach that targets not only the individual, but also the interpersonal level, community, and public policy level of change. And each approach that I'm going to briefly mention is staffed by a team of researchers and staff members and community partners in Alabama. And all of these approaches were approved by the University of Alabama Institutional Review Board. And my colleagues and I, we have no disclosures to report. The first initiative that I want to just briefly talk about is called the Teen Community Health Advisor Program. And it's based on a promising evidence-based model that trains youth as peer educators, role models, and agents of change within their local school system. And as an outcome of implementing this evidence-based model, we were able to train 15 students in the Jefferson County school system, and they underwent a rigorous three-day training institute. And this is just an example of their training curriculum that was actually put together by one of the adolescent medicine residents at UAB. These are some of the students who went through the training. It entailed not only lecture, but also role playing. And as a result of being trained to be a peer educator or community health advisor, and we know that based on the literature, they're known by different names depending on the setting that you're in, whether they're promotores, lay health advisors, so on and so forth. These young people have stepped up to the challenge and they are encouraging their peers in health conversations. So again, they're marketing the concept that being healthy is fashionable. Being healthy is something that they want to strive for. They're encouraging their peers through health talking circles, uh, teen health clubs. They're hosting monthly teen observances and activities, as well as fitness clubs. So we're not only appealing to the reproductive health of these adolescents and high school students, but also the total person as a way to reach them and to keep them engaged. Also, as a community health advisor, they are required to track the conversations and the encounters that they're having with their peers. So therefore, there are monthly log forms. There's necessary paperwork that they're required to complete, not just having a conversation, but actually monitoring what is tr transpiring during these conversations. And as a way to maintain their skill and competency, they are required to attend monthly meetings to renew their continuing education for the maintenance of the knowledge regarding HPV and sexual risk behavior. So just to let you know what is going to happen um, on forward until the summer of 2011, we're still undergoing process evaluation as, as well as program evaluation. Um, we're also in the process of modifying any um, particular facets of the program that the teens have decided that they want to modify. And we're going to be extending the program throughout the 2011-2012 school year. And so each year, uh, we will be soliciting new recruits to take the place of those who are graduating. So this is an ongoing process that we have been able to incorporate into the existing school system. And if I've missed anything, I'm going to ask my partners when it's Q&A time to please chime in. Approach number two that we're engaged in is called the Health e Teen, which entails using an interactive website with opt-in text messaging capabilities. And so as we all know, and as was discussed briefly today, that we know that we're living in a very interactive technology age. The teens of today are truly a web-based generation, and 90% have reported going online, and 75%, if not more, use the internet to find health information. And so this particular endeavor was based on the work conducted by one of our Robert Wood Johnson scholars, uh, Maria Norena, 
And so what this website is about, which is still under construction because it's based solely on the feedback that we receive from a group of teenagers who are helping us to design this website, is designed to increase HPV awareness and knowledge and serve as a portal where parents as well as teens, school administrators, and others can go to for factual health information. So there is a teen council that convenes to provide input and advice on this particular website. We have the web component. We also have an expert panel that is responsible for blogging and putting out different factual messages, as well as the sale text option. So this is how it actually looks now. But as I stated, that the youth who are involved in helping us put together this web board will be modifying it so the team can actually type in a message and one of the expert panels will respond to that message and they can engage in a dialogue. So again, this is just one way among others that you'll hear about from the other five states that we're engaged in to keep um, the knowledge levels high among our constituents who utilize this particular system. These are some more activities that will be taking place in the coming months. We're going to have a series of group discussions. From these group discussions, uh, they will be giving us input on the content and the layout and the text message script, so on and so forth. The next approach is called the Reach Us approach, and it's in collaboration with a CDC-funded initiative that we have underway at UAB. It's a six-state initiative that's operating in Alabama. Arkansas, Kentucky, Louisiana, Mississippi, and Tennessee. And the whole premise of the Reach Us project is to utilize a diverse coalition, a grassroots movement um, to educate the constituents and the community about the benefits of engaging in direct action organizing or advocacy efforts to make sure that their constituents and their partners and their peers are informed about HPV awareness, the HPV, HPV vaccine, and so on and so forth. And so what have we been doing through this initiative? Again, we've conducted two focus groups in Tuskegee, Alabama, which is Macon County, to uh, get input from the community members themselves as well as members of our coalition. We've also conducted two sessions in Birmingham, Alabama, Again, soliciting input and feedback regarding ways to mobilize the community to engage in, into action. We know that any political change that's going to happen at the national level starts at the community level. Again, if the problem is in the community, then the answer is in the community. Some other preliminary outcomes that we would like to just share with you that we've collaborated with our state partners at the Alabama Department of Public Health to add HPV questions to our BRFIS survey, the Behavioral Risk Factor Surveillance System. We've also compiled and analyzed the information gathered through our formative evaluation sessions to uh, develop a comprehensive community action plan. So again, this is an ongoing process. We're going to be implementing and evaluating the outcomes of this community action plan and sustaining it through efforts underway at the Minority Health and Research Center, as well as efforts through the Alabama Breast and Cervical Cancer Coalition. These are some of our Reach Us collaborators that I want to acknowledge, as well as our Teen CHA collaborators and the Healthy Teen Program Consultants. Thank you.